This video will discuss the direction of heat flow in isolated systems as predicted by the second law of thermodynamics. So let's consider an isolated system. So we have this green boundary here representing our total isolated system. No energy or matter may be exchanged outside of this green box. Inside this isolated system, we have two closed systems in purple. So we have a closed system on the left with its own temperature and volume. We have a closed system on the right with its temperature and volume. Both are closed, so they can exchange energy with one another, but they cannot exchange matter. In between them, we have a fixed barrier, so the volume of each system cannot change. So there's no work that can be done between the two because their volume has to remain constant but they can allow heat to flow between them. So heat can flow from the right to the left or vice versa, depending on these relative temperatures. So we're gonna take a look at what the second law of thermodynamics says about what direction the heat flows based off of the relative temperatures of this left and right closed systems. Okay, so to start off, as I said, the volume change of each of them is going to be zero. They're fixed, so they can't move. So that means that the work that can be done by or on either of them is also equal to zero. So the only way that the energy can change is by heat. <clears throat> so du for the left side is equal to dql, the heat for the left side, which I've defined as dq. So heat flowing into the left side is, the posi is a positive sign. DUR, the change in internal energy of the right side, is equal to DQR, the heat on the right side, which is equal to negative DQ. So a positive sign for heat is energy flowing into the left, increasing the temperature of the left side. All right, so what is the entropy of the left side? DSL, the change in entropy of the left, is equal to DQL over TL, or equal to or greater than or equal to that value. So dql over tl, which is dq over tl. So that's, <clears throat> again, q being this just defined sign for what direction the heat is going to flow. The change in entropy on the right side, dsr, is going to equal dqr, the heat on the right side, divided by its temperature, tr, which is negative dq over tr. So the total entropy of this isolated system, ds, it's going to equal DSL plus DSR, which is equal to DQ over TL minus DQ over TR. So now I can factor out DQ from both of these, and I have that the change in entropy for this isolated system is equal to DQ times 1 over TL minus 1 over TR. And from the second law of thermodynamics, we have that the entropy change for this isolated system has to be greater than or equal to zero for any physical process. So let's examine some cases here. Let's say if the left temperature is higher than the right temperature, TL is greater than TR, then 1 over TL is less than 1 over TR. So that means that this quantity here is going to be negative so in order for this left side to be positive, we need to multiply times a negative Q. So this means that Q is less than zero. This means that heat flows from the left to the right, from the hot to the cold, making the temperature on the left go down and the temperature on the right go up until they have reached a thermal equilibrium where both of the temperatures are equal and we no longer have, uh, and then once these temperatures are equal, then this term is zero and Q can be whatever direction it likes. Alternatively, if we have the left temperature is lower than the right, TL is less than TR, then 1 over TL is greater than 1 over TR, and this minus this is going to be a positive number, so then our heat has to be positive as well for this side to be greater than or equal to zero. So then what is going to happen is heat is going to flow from the right to the left. Energy is going to be is going to be taken out of this system and flow over to this system as heat. That'll make the temperature of the right go down and the temperature of the left go up. And that heat will continue to flow once again until the temperatures are equal. They're in a thermal equilibrium and this term goes to zero. Then the heat can flow in whatever direction it likes once the, temp once the two sides are in equilibrium. 
So according to our analysis of the entropy of these two systems, this says that the second law requires that heat flows from hot to cold in an isolated system. So note that once again this applies only to isolated systems. This does not apply to closed systems or to open systems. Most systems in the universe are open systems. But for the, for the strong restriction of isolated systems where we have this situation here, it is required by the second law that heat flows from hot to cold.